Hey hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to the next installment in the countdown of the best fully upgraded cars in GTA Online. If this is the first video you've seen in this series, click the annotation below or the link in the description and everything will be explained in the intro video. Otherwise, let's continue from where we finished off last time. So in the previous video, we saw that the car in 21st position managed to get a lap time of 1 minute 7.949, and in 20th position is the Sultan, which manages a lap time of 1 minute 7.277, so a bit of a jump in lap time there. Not a bad lap time from the Sultan, it's our 12th best sports car out of 21, so right in the middle of all the sports cars. And it's not too bad, you know, it's, it's all-wheel drive system, really gives it some good handling and some good acceleration. Although it's not really on the pace of the top sports cars, it can do you quite well. And it is our quickest four-seater car in the game. It's about a second quicker than the Felon, you know, there isn't that much difference between those two uh, that we saw in the previous video. But it is ultimately our quickest four-seater car in the game. So in 19th position, we have the Coquette. Now, the Coquette can be quite twitchy at times, you know, it, it, uh, it reacts very well to your inputs, your steering inputs, which on the one hand is a good thing because it does kind of exactly what you want it to do, but on the other hand it can be quite twitchy as well, so it's quite hard to predict at some points how it's going to react to some turns, to some bumps, things like that, but if you handle it well, it will give you a good lap time. With a 1 minute 7.0, it's about two tenths of a second quicker than the Sultan. Uh, it's not too bad, you know, you can certainly do a lot worse because it is our 11th best sports car out of 21, but you can also do quite a bit better as well. So in 18th place, we have the Voltic. Now, this is our second worst supercar in the game, and that's because it loses its main advantage. And its main advantage, when it was stock, always used to be its acceleration because it's an electric vehicle. But when it's fully modded, it doesn't have a turbo and it doesn't have a transmission upgrade, which means that all the other cars around it catch up to it in terms of acceleration, which means that the Voltic, when fully modded, basically just becomes another mediocre sports car, really. You know, it, it is our eighth best supercar out of nine. Uh, it, it loses that advantage of its acceleration and it just becomes just another sports car, really, in terms of how it performs. So in 17th place, we have the Alpha, which is two tenths of a second quicker than the Voltic. Uh, the, the Alpha feels really, really nice to drive. You know, it, it feels really nice around the corners. Um, a a well-balanced car, I would say, for the Alpha. Uh, good acceleration, reasonably good top speed, nice around the corners, good handling. Uh, it's our 10th best sports car as well. And that's what I was saying, you know, it, 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 the Alpha catches up to the Voltic in terms of acceleration because the Voltic doesn't have the turbo. And that's what means that they get similar lap times. So yeah, a decent uh, decent showing from the Alpha there. And in 16th place, we have the Carbon is Air. Now the main problem with the Carbon is Air was always its traction. And that doesn't really change, you know. The, the addition of a spoiler does help the Carbon is Air um, in terms of overall performance with its traction. But it still does suffer a little bit compared to the other sports cars. And with a 1 minute 6.3, it is only about a tenth of a second quicker than the Alpha. Now it is our ninth best sports car in the game which isn't too bad, you know, you'd have to say that's pretty good. Uh, but you, you you can still do a lot better than the Carbon is there. It's good in a straight line, but not really that great around the corners. So in 15th place, we have the Banshee. Now, the Banshee really does propel itself up the order a little bit when it's fully modded compared to what it was like when it was stuck. The spoiler really does help it in terms of traction. It's able to put that power down quite well in terms of acceleration as well. It's got good top speed. Um, it feels nice around the corners, feels well balanced to drive as well. And with a 1 minute 6.2, again, it's only another tenth of a second taken off the time of the Carbon is there. But it's a very nice sports car to have, and you can certainly do a lot worse. Uh, this is our eighth best sports car in the game. We've got uh, 14 cars to go. Seven of them are supercars, and seven of them are sports cars. So, in 14th place, we have our next supercar, and that's the Adder. The Adder is our seventh best supercar, which means technically it's our third worst supercar, and it really has fallen from grace. It's only four tenths of a second quicker than the Banshee, and that's because it doesn't have a spoiler. So the Adder is very good in a straight line. It's certainly the best to have for those long highway races where there's no corners, but it can't take corners very well at all. When it's fully modded, it's just got too much power. It can't, uh, it can't put the power down well. It can't get around the corners as quick as all of the other supercars. And that's because it's the only supercar, apart from the Bullet, that doesn't have a spoiler to give it that added traction. So, yeah, 
The Comet in 13th place gets almost an identical lap time to the other with a 1 minute 5.8 again. Uh, and they, they build up their lap time in completely different ways. The Comet is definitely a lot better around the corners than the other. Not as good in a straight line. Uh, but the Comet can step out on you a little bit. It, it can oversteer quite a bit. You do have to be able to control that and curb that a little bit. But it can certainly do get a good lap time out of it. And uh, if you control the Comet very well, it, it will give you a good lap time. And that's our seventh best sports car in the game. So in 12th place, we have our next best sports car, our sixth best sports car with the Serrano. Now the Serrano just gets a 1 minute 5.4, so about 4 tenths of a second quicker than the Comet. And in terms of the way that the Serrano reacts, it is very similar to the Comet. If you drive it improperly or you, you push it a little bit too much, it can oversteer on you just like the Comet does. Um, but if you drive it well, you drive it nicely, um, you take your time with it, it will give you a good lap time. It's got good power out of the corners. It does have decent traction. Um, and it's our second best convertible car in the game as well. And that means that our best convertible car is in fact the 9F in 11th place overall. So the 9F is our 5th best sports car in the game with a 1 minute 5.2, it's about 2 tenths of a second quicker than the Serrano and the 9F convertible is exactly the same as the 9F hardtop and that goes the same for the Zion for example uh, that we've seen in previous videos. So yeah, the 9F is a very quick car, it's got all wheel drive so that means it's very good in terms of acceleration uh, and traction around the corners. It can step out on you a little bit just like the Serrano and the Comet, it can oversteer but if you can control that it will give you a very good lap time as well. So there we have it, we've seen half of the top 20 cars in the game, let me know down below what you thought about this, uh, this section of it. In the next video we're going to be seeing from 10th place all the way down to 6th, so the next 5 cars in the series, also let me know in the comments which cars you think those will be. Thanks a lot for watching everyone, I really do appreciate it, leave a like and comment and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.